Soldiers who seized power yesterday in the West African nation of Gabon have named the head of the Republican Guard as the country's transitional leader. Military personnel appeared on state television yesterday announcing the coup hours after President Ali Bongo won re-election. His family has held power in Gabon for more than five decades. It's the eighth military takeover in Central and Western Africa in three years. So Will Ross is joining me now to discuss the situation in Gabon. He is a the African regional editor for BBC News. Thank you so much for joining us, Will. Uh, this is a country I think a lot of people have not been paying You're attention welcome. to, so I think we just need some of the basics. Can you sort of help us understand the key figures uh, behind the coup, also the family that has run that country for the last 50 years? What brought us to this point? Yeah, well, let's first of all then start with the, the family itself, because that sort of sets the background. You've got to go all the way back to 1967, to the time when uh, the Bongo family first uh, had seized power in uh, Gabon. Now, it started with Omar Bongo, who was in power for more than four decades. He died in 2009, and then his son, Ali Bongo, took over, the man who has just been deposed. And throughout that time, this uh, resource-rich, oil-rich country with a population now of not much more than two million, um, basically has not seen a huge amount of that money trickle down to the general population. And the Bongo family has been accused of all kinds of corruption scandals and basically living it pretty large, you could say, with properties in different countries across, uh, uh, across your side of the world as well as uh, in Europe. So um, that was the sort of background on the family. And there have been elections that have been uh, disputed, uh, at least two disputed elections um, recently uh, involving Ali Bongo that led to demonstrations on the streets and uh, uh, opposition supporters dying um, because they felt the, 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 uh, the elections were rigged and then the security forces were brought in. So then the announcement of this election at the weekend um, and Ali Bongo unsurprisingly was declared the winner with about two thirds of the vote. And then suddenly 12 military men appear on state TV and say, we're in power. That election doesn't count. And as you say, as you say, a new military leader now, General Brice Oligi Ngema, who was the head of a, a, an elite military unit, he's now the main man. And we wait to hear their next steps. So, you know, you, you can't help but to think about the coverage that we've been having with Niger and other countries. We're, we've seen a number of coups now in this same area, a number of coups involving former French colonies. Is there a concern that what is happening in Gabon will spill out beyond its borders or that the spilling has already happened, that though there have been sort of, you know, decades of dissatisfaction with the Bongo family, seeing other coups in the area may have helped to sort of trigger this one. Well, it certainly seems to be contagious, doesn't it, when you mm. look at uh, exactly what you said, eight, eight coups since 2020. This one perhaps is a little bit more similar to the Guinea one in that uh, that the president there in Guinea was trying to extend his time in, in power, change the constitution, get rid of the two-term presidential limit and stay on. And then people were kind of fed up with him and the army, the army stepped in. Other coups we've seen in the Sahel region, that region um, just south of the Sahara across Central and West Africa, that has been, a lot of that has been to do with the growing threat of uh, Islamist militant groups, extremist groups and uh, soldiers dying out there trying to fight against these extremist groups linked to al-Qaeda and Islamic State have then led to a lot of dissatisfaction in the military and uh, sieges of power. But you mentioned, yes, this, this French issue. There's definitely been a real waning of the influence of France. Uh, this is a, a, a country that had so many former colonies in Africa that it kept very tight links with. It was, uh, you know, seen as really uh, enabling some of these autocratic leaders to stay in power mm. because it didn't insist on very democratic elections. It also has huge uh, uh, interest in the resources across the region. But there is a growing feeling across much of Africa, a sort of uh, anti 
the former colonial power and wanting to break away properly. And maybe this is part of that. There's a little bit of, of that. And perhaps other leaders in, 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 in the region, including Paul Beer, who's 90 years old, yeah. next door in Cameroon. He's been there for four decades. Maybe he's starting to look and see, am I safe? Um, so really many people in Africa now saying, where's the next coup going to come? Mm, wow. Will Ross, thank you so much.